Okay, I wanted to give you a little bit of history on uh, how I came into uh, doing what I'm doing and also making some changes in my life, especially if you're getting ready to do a uh, international move because uh, I think what happens in a lot of cases, people make these uh, international moves and they don't really think and take their time in, in trying to make decisions on this. And I'm going to tell you a little bit on my experience and what I went through and uh, it might help you a little bit. A lot of people are actually looking into moving to places like Florida, Puerto Rico, uh, making a change domestically. If you're living in the U.S., uh, you do have some people that live, you know, in, in different countries where actually different areas of the countries, like for instance, Switzerland, you have different cantons that charge, the, the taxes are different. And, uh, and there are other countries too that have that too. So literally you can move locally or in the same country that you're in and still be able to make some changes in your, in your taxes. Back around the early 1990s, I uh, was spend really high taxes and was looking into moving to Florida, but I ended up putting it off because uh, I had older parents. Of course, my parents didn't want me to make decisions based on them, and, uh, but I did because they were getting older, so I wanted to be around them. And you know, I grew up in North Carolina, and North Carolina had a state income tax, still does have today. So, you know, I had to make the decision, do I want to wait this out until they pass away? Because you, you've probably got children, maybe young children, you're thinking about waiting until they get older. Uh, the problem is, is you, you make that move now while your company's real small. And, uh, uh, and then maybe get your kids enrolled in the new country and you got to remember too, when you take kids uh, and you start them off young, they're more likely going to stay in that country with you uh, when they grow up or they'll be close by. Which if you wait until they're grown up, they get adjusted to the U.S. or whatever country it is, and then you decide that you want to take off and move, they might not want to move with you. And so you're really separated a lot. A lot of people, when they grow up in places like St. Kitts, they like this nice weather outside so what they end up doing is they uh, uh, they leave and they come back and especially with internet type businesses you can run really good from here and you don't have to worry about uh, the tax situation stuff and with nice weather all, all year round it, uh, boating and uh, just sailing uh, things like snorkeling diving tennis golf all kinds of outdoor activities soccer for your kids what happens is a lot of them just don't want to, they'll move, but then they come back after they get, go to school. And uh, it's a great environment, not only to teach them, uh, or let them see how this environment is, but what it does is uh, they learn about the tax laws better if they're actually in a country like this. And they're actually doing their own business, and they grow up in this environment. You got to remember when your children, when they take money and inherit it, <coughs> if they're in the USA, what's going to happen is they inherit that money. They they might end up paying tons of money out in taxes because they don't. They just don't know. They they've heard you talk and stuff, but they really don't know how this works, and they've never been brought up in this environment. And a lot of people, too, when they have children, they don't want to. The children don't want to. Uh, uh, a lot of times they are brought up in a different environment uh, in, in, when they're brought up in the U.S. You take off and leave, and, and then they just they don't want to move with you, okay? It's uh, a lot easier if you bring kids when they're young, just a lot easier to get this done. So what I ended up doing was I looked at Florida. I came real close to moving to Florida because Florida, of course, has no, in, no state income tax. I uh, looked at also Texas. Texas has got a real high property tax, one of the highest in the in the U.S. So I had to decide, you know, uh, what you know, what do I really want to do? Do I really want to uh, stick with uh, in North Carolina and just wait until my parents die, or do I want to uh, uh, 
if my dad lived to be uh, over 100 years old, is do I want to go ahead and make the move now? And uh, I did wait for a while, and then finally I made the move. But uh, uh, when I made my move, I didn't go to Florida. I went international. The reason I, I did that is I felt like uh, if you're going to be taking a move and you're going to get all this trouble of doing it, I, I'm going to tell you something. It's just as much trouble going from North Carolina to uh, uh, Florida as it is to go from North Carolina to Panama, St. Kitts, or any other place, okay? And uh, the thing is, too, is you solve your tax problems earlier before your assets get so big. And, and plus, if you, if you bring children with you when they're young, uh, you can keep the family a lot better together if you do this at a young age with the children. Let me give you an example. The development I'm living in right now, um, the, uh, the, there's quite a few people in here that were from here originally. They moved to the UK, and then they ended up moving back here, and a lot of their kids came back with them. Some did and some didn't. The older they were, uh, when they were introduced to St. Kitts, uh, those people didn't come back as, as often or maybe not at all, okay? And whereas the ones that grew up in St. Kitts as children, uh, and then maybe they went off to the UK to school and stuff, uh, they, got, they really got to know St. Kitts and Evis real well. A lot of those ended up coming back because uh, they were introduced real early. So if you've got young kids, it just makes it a lot easier to do it. But remember, St. Kitts is so close to the U.S. I mean, gee whiz, you can, uh, it's just as quick to go from St. In fact, it's quicker going from St. Kitts to the eastern part of the U.S., like, you know, places like uh, Florida or even North Carolina is, is going from North Carolina to California on a flight. So, but the tax difference is huge. And remember, if you go to Florida, you're going to eliminate your state income tax, uh, if you're coming from a state like uh, North Carolina or California, but you're not going to get rid of the federal tax. And that's the big tax that you're looking at. And depending on the size of your state, the state inheritance tax is also. Now, you know, the limits are a lot higher now, but th those limits could be dropping. Uh, if the liberals stay in office, that more than likely is going to drop over a period of time. And uh, if you really want to get around all such taxes and property taxes also, uh, St. Kitts has almost no property tax. You know, we talk about income taxes a lot, but you got to remember uh, property tax is based on the actual value of the property, not the ownership portion that you have on it. So you could have a big mortgage on a property tax, I mean, or a mortgage on a property, and your tax is going to be the same as someone that owns the property outright. So if you've got a lot of properties, uh, you could be paying, depending on how much equity you got in those houses, in relation to taxes, you could be paying a lot, lot of money because uh, it's based on the value of your property and you know, not what you owe. So uh, if you really want to get around all taxes, the key to do it, doing it is doing it in a place that has low taxes across the board. And I would advise you, from experience, don't go to a state and then graduate up to leaving the country. It's going to, it's just a lot more stress. Do one international move and get it done, okay? And what, what I would be doing is visiting some countries that you like and seeing what these countries are, uh, you know, how you can adjust to them and then make your move, okay? And then instead of, you know, moving to a state, like I see a lot of high net worth people I had. I used to be in the insurance business years ago. Some of these guys made really high incomes and a lot of them ended up going back to places like Florida. Quite a few of them ended up in Florida to retire. Uh, some of them were making millions and millions of dollars a year. And the thing is, they, uh, they could have saved a lot more in taxes just by making an extra exit outside the US. Uh, it would have ended up saving a lot in, in taxes if they did that. So, you know, it's, uh, you have to make a decision, but w whatever your decision you make, make it really early and it, it, it will benefit you. And I'll, I'll tell you, uh, like I said, if you've got young ch children, the best time to do it is when your kids are really young. 
Also, folks, if you want to legally get your income taxes to zero, how to get a second passport as quick as 45 days, and you're making at least 150,000 U.S. dollars a year or have a net worth of at least uh, 1.5 million U.S., you just hit the subscribe button right of your screen right here, and you get new videos automatically as they come out. And I would like to hear from you if you got a question or comment, just put it below. And again, if you got a question, just go to our website, www.citizenshipquickly.com, and just ask for some help. So, uh, my, my suggestion is, uh, is I would go ahead and make one move, okay? And then once you make that move, uh, you won't have to do it again. More than likely, if you've done your homework and you've gone to some of these places before you do it. Uh, but like I said, you, you're going to need to pick countries that are going to work for your type of business. And this is uh, something a lot of people don't do their homework in, is uh, uh, you need to really find out ahead of time that type of business that you want to do do you have to be a citizen to be in that type of business before you end up especially if you go outside the country it doesn't affect you so much if, if you're in the u.s but once you make that move international now now you're they're going to be looking at you as a citizen of that country and can you do that type of business and that's why i say if you want think done things done quickly go with a citizenship by investment it's a fast track because if you try to do a residency by investment, it's going to take you years to get that passport, if you can even get it. And, and, and a lot of people don't get the, the residency, uh, the citizenship going the residency by investment option. This is the problem that I see a lot from different people. Uh, the, the, usually the biggest thing that knocks them out is the language barrier problem. And uh, I would tell you anything, if I had to tell you anything, I would pick countries where you can speak the language uh, where you don't have to learn a second language. And uh, the fast track would be the first option, like St. Kitts or any of the other fast track programs in the Caribbean. I like St. Kitts better because you've got more visa free travel than any of the other fast track programs. There's no income tax, no capital gains tax, no estate tax, no inheritance tax. So you can have a local business in St. Kitts and pay no income taxes. Uh, that's a bomb buster. Not just that. You can have, this is one of the few places in the world, you can actually have um, a lot of rentals and literally pay no income tax on those rentals. I mean, that's, uh, there are very few places in the world uh, where you can have that sort of benefit. And, uh, uh, and then almost no property tax. We're, we're looking at 0.20% uh, of what are you're purchasing with a 29,600 US dollar exclusion off that property before that 0.20% kicks in. So you're, you're looking at a, a very, very low property tax. Uh, and by combining all of these benefits together, I tell you, it's really hard to beat uh, here. I've, I've, been, I've done a lot of traveling. This country is not right for everybody. Some people uh, want more going on. Uh, I think as you get older, you, you kind of go back the other way. Uh, I like uh, quiet places with the the air is very, the air and the water is real clean. To me, that's more important than anything. But a lot of people just don't look at that. They look at, uh, you know, uh, more um, places have a lot of uh, uh, sky high rises, high population. But when you do that, you're also going to have more air pollution, more water pollution. And I like to be able to swim in the ocean and have clean water. To me, that's real, real important to me. It just depends on what you're looking for. So, you know, I, I would advise you to pick places, uh, you know, where the the uh, environment's real good. Um, now, also, folks, if you're looking for uh, ocean property, which a lot of people don't think about this ahead of time, you want to be in an ocean that's clean. I mean, it's uh, I, I see people all the time want to be in big metropolitan areas that want to be close to the ocean. But I tell you, it's very hard to have that and have no water pollution. Uh, I'll give you a good example. I used to live in Panama. Oh, man, I was standing there in Panama City. And of course, all, most Americans that go to Panama want to be in the city there. Uh, and I did, too. Of all the places in Panama that I went to, uh, Panama City was the best. It's the only place I felt like I could really live there, okay? 
We're in the canal zone right outside of Panama City. Uh, it was just the area that I liked the best. And uh, but I want to tell you something. The air pollution was really bad there. I had a real hard time dealing with that. The water coming in. I never forget the time. It was 2003. Uh, I was in a high rise. Looked out the window. And I said, all this red dye going in the ocean from a river. It was all over the newspaper. One of the major companies there had dumped uh, some sort of dye. I don't know what it was. It was awful. But that water stunk to high hell all the time. And it was very toxic to go swimming in there. And literally, you had to go miles and miles and miles, you know, down to Coronado Beach to where you could get some areas that I would call swimmable. Everything else was pretty polluted. And I don't like that. I just, I have to be in a nice environment. And if you want something like that for your children, St. Kitts is a great place to go. Now, Antigua is another one. We also deal with Antigua, another fast track. But in Antigua, your taxes will be higher, as I mentioned before. If you set up a business in Antigua, they're going to hit you on, uh, they force you to pay social security taxes even if you're paying it somewhere else you still have to pay it on yourself and your employees now st kitts does not require it on yourself as a self-employed owner they do require it on your employees okay but I mean, that's one big tax benefit you have in st kitts that you don't have in antigua okay there are a lot of other things too i've done comparisons on those before you got more visa free travel in st kitts uh, there's just a lot of things. I, it's cheaper to live. The cost is less. So, you know, you, you have to decide do you want to be uh, you know, paying out uh, more in living costs, too, because you're going to have that in Antigua versus St. Kitts. That's just, that is just going to happen. Okay? Uh, it's not perfect here, but you will eliminate all your state and federal income taxes if you do that. Now, I'm saying you eliminate them, that's assuming that you've relinquished your U.S. citizenship. Now, you can qualify for this foreign overseas exclusion. Uh, it's roughly, it's 112,000 U.S. dollars on the husband, 112,000 the wife, uh, 224,000 total. It's a tax credit. Literally, it's, uh, you know, you, I say it's, it's a t tax deduction off your income. And, uh, and also what you can do, too, is if you set up a foreign corporation and that corporation pays you your income, you don't have to pay FICA from that if the foreign corporation pays your income. So that's another benefit that you get that you will not get if you go to Florida. You go to Florida, you're going to have to pay that 15, roughly 15% 15 FICA tax. And you escape the state tax, but you still have the federal tax. Why not get rid of FICA? Why not get rid of... Uh, the, uh, the state income tax and the federal tax. Now, like I said, if you're still a U.S. citizen, uh, you have an exclusion up to roughly 112000 per person for husband and wife. You want to get rid of that exclusion, just relinquish your U.S. citizenship. If you're coming from another country, uh, high tax like uh, Canada that taxes worldwide income to its residents, uh, or other countries like Italy, France, uh, you're going to have to leave those countries long enough to detax yourself where you can move to a place like St. Kitts and live totally tax-free. Why most people don't do it, I don't know. It floors me. Unless some people, some people really, uh, they do like socialism. Uh, I never have liked it, but there are people that do like it. So you have to decide if you don't like that type of environment. Uh, the only way you're going to change it is you're going to have to the quickest way is just to get your bags packed up and leave and do whatever is re required. If you're, if you're a U.S. citizen, you're going to have to be outside the U.S. long enough to qualify for that foreign overseas exclusion. And if you're, if you're from a high-tax country outside the U.S. that taxes based on residency, you might have to pay an exit tax to get out of that. Okay? And we can help you and guide you towards 
what you're looking to do and what you want to do as far as your business goes, the tax you're looking to try to get, get around from uh, legally, and we'll show you how to do that. If you want to know more on this, folks, go to our website, again, www.citizenshipquickly.com, and just ask for some help. And again, if you want more help on this, uh, you can put a question or comment below and be glad to get with you. And don't forget, hit the subscribe button right of your screen right here. We've got uh, just under 800 videos uh, that will help you. And I will try to look at all these if you can. It will really educate you on, on trying to make the right decision. And I look forward to talking to you in the next video. Take care.